So here's an example of um, being deadline oriented, right? This is, this is something, this is at minimum, this is the basic that I ask my students to accomplish. So if you, you know, when, when you get here to Berea, if you end up in my um, college, what is it called? It's like first year college student success course, basically where I teach you how to college. If you're in my section or any of the others, um, one of the um, topics, one of the modules, one of the things that we go through is time management. And so at minimum with my students, I require you to have a calendar where all of your important deadlines and assignments are written down, right? So what you'll notice here is there's no breakdown as far as like times are concerned or how you'll break this out, but at least you know when things are due. Our memories are very fallible. And what I mean by that is they're not actually on our side. It's, um, you should watch, if you can, look up on YouTube um, the show called Brain Games on memory. And you'll see just how much our brain likes to insert things that really didn't actually happen. And it just forgets things that did. So when we're trying to remember these deadlines, and I have a great memory, I have a very um, associative memory. I can like see movies and play things back in my mind and remember more than most, but my brain and my memory is still flawed. Um, so why bother trying to keep all of these deadlines in your head when you can just put them on paper or put them in something to alert you and you have all that space to think about other things? You know, it, it's, it just is unwise. So this is the minimum for me. <clears throat> this is actually what a lot of my students prefer. Um, and the reason being, it not only has the deadlines when things are due, but it also breaks these things down into chunks. So for example, um, let's take this argumentative essay that's due on Friday the 13th. Oh, and by the way, this is an actual real student. These, this example um, with the calendar and then one that this one, it's the same student um, who funny enough worked for admissions at one point. But um, anyway, so with what he did was he broke things down into different tasks, right? So argumentative essay. On Tuesday the 3rd, I'm going to start my thesis. I'm going to figure out what in the world is it that I'm actually trying to write about? What is it that I want to discuss or to prove? Um, on the next day, he has more time. He's like, all right, well, what is the second claim I'm making? And I need to probably clean up my thesis. So then on the next day, he's supporting those claims. And then he takes two days before he gets back to his revisions, right? And then the read article is actually for something different. You'll see here on the 16th. But his paper gets done almost an entire week before it's due. And you'll see that with this essay, drafting my ideas, drafting my claims, finding my evidence, completing it, reviewing it. Breaking these things out actually allows you to, have, to choose your hard days instead of letting them choose you it's a lot easier to feel relaxed when you're creating your own deadlines, which is in opposition to a deadline telling you when something is due. Um, so this is, this is preferred. So if you wanna get really detail oriented and with this student, I asked him to do it for, for plenty of reasons and we fought over it, we fought. He was like, I don't really wanna do this. I'm like, you're not doing it on your own. I'm doing it for you but he just didn't want to take the time. And most of us don't want to do that. Most of us, it feels overwhelming. It feels daunting. It feels um, cumbersome. It just, it, it's, it's, a, it's a lot. So as you'll go through and see, there's a time for everything. All right, so reading chapter three, what I said to him, I said, when you think about how long it's going to take you to read something, right? So in this case, on the second, chapter three, if this was the most boring thing you have ever read, how long would it take you? And so he goes, I don't know, maybe like an hour. And so I was like, okay, cool. Or excuse me, he said 30 minutes. And so I'm like, all right, let's add a little time for a buffer, right? Because when we really don't want to do something, we are amazing at finding everything else to do. Um, in college, my roommates used to love when I had things due because magically I would just start cleaning the apartment and it would just be spotless all because I was procrastinating because of a fear of failure. Um, and so anyway, as we go through with each of these things, with his essay, I believe we said it was something around like seven hours or, or eight hours, something like that. And so we break up each task into these manageable pieces, thinking about a maximum. I would rather have way too much time allotted than not enough. It's really easy for us to, um, what's the word? It's easy for us to 
be overly optimistic, I guess I should say. Um, I mean, it, it's, it's all, for all of us, myself included, uh, we can be very overly optimistic about how much time something will take us or how good we are at something. We, we don't often have realistic views of how long something might take us. Um, so yeah, so we go through and we break these things down. Now, one thing I want you to notice, right? Notice the following. One out of every, fr one out of five Fridays are used for studying, only one. And that's here on the sixth, drafting an idea for one hour. Two out of five Saturdays, studying. And approximately two to three hours studying per weekday. I believe the longest time on here, and I found it the other day, um, the longest time that we had on here was like three hours or three hours and 15 minutes, but two to three hours per day working on things. Now granted, there are four classes plus his internship um, that he had to get assignments done for. So it's, it's not like he doesn't have things going on, but two to three hours a day sounds crazy to people. Like I'm a psychologist. My PhD will be in educational psychology. I think about motivation. I think about time. I think about learning memory. And even for psycho, like psychology experts, it sounds like it would be crazy because the traditional wisdom is two to three hours for every hour you're in class, which is good for some classes, but think about it now. If you're sitting in a gym class, are you really going to spend three hours outside of gym class doing what? You know, in some classes, you may spend a little bit more, unfortunately. You might be in organic chemistry, and it just so happens that this topic on molecular, whatever, whatever, that's probably not even a chemistry thing, that topic is the most challenging one for you. So you're actually spending four hours, right? That's where some of the realistic um, kind of moving and morphing and, and changing your schedule as you go comes into place. So this is hyper organized and productive. And I don't want you to think to yourself, man, like if I don't stick to that limit, I must have messed up. No, no, that's not the case whatsoever. This is just ideally, at maximum, ideally, this is how long it should take me to complete. And what he ended up finding was that he actually finished things days, if not weeks before they were due, when he stuck to what he said he would do. You know, 15 minutes for reading this, or excuse me, 45 minutes, three 15 minute chunks, that's all you need. Read 15 minutes here, go off, do something else, the next thing, come back 15 more minutes, go off, do something else, the next thing. And then for 15 minutes toward the end, you just wrap up, review, make sure that you understand what you were doing, and you're planning for the next time that you sit down to read. Oops. So um, same student. What we then did was we broke out a, uh, a weekly planner. And this is what I like to call your ideal weekly planner. Because it can be very anxiety inducing to try to follow this step by step, like perfectly. I don't recommend, I, I do recommend you try to stick as closely as possible to it. But this is really just a guide. This is you knowing, so um, I guess I'm more referring to this one on the right, but this is you knowing if I follow this schedule, I'm good. As long as I follow what I said I had to get done, I know I will get done everything I have to do. And there's exceptions, but in general, that's you know typically true. So a lot of students will do something like this, right? They'll have the things that are required. At Berea, you're required to go to work. It is a non-negotiable, it's just something you have to do. Um, because of COVID, convocation is not really a thing anymore, but I'm assuming it's going to come back at some point. So, um, you know, that's, that's a weekly thing that you have to attend. And then classes, you know, obviously that's why you're coming to school. So your class, your work, and your convo, those are things that you just have to do. All of this white space looks like free time. I mean, it's why most of us will say, oh, I've got time. I can do that Tuesday morning. You know, I, oh, I don't have to go to class until 10 a.m. I'll do that Tuesday. I'll wake up early and do it. One of the biggest lies you'll ever tell yourself. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll do that on Thursday. Like, I don't have combo this week. I'll just do it after, I'll do it after lunch. One of the second, you know, second biggest lie you'll tell yourself. When you start to put things off, you're more likely to not do them and less likely to admit that to yourself. Being someone who has ADHD, my motto is if I think about it, I have to do it. it you know, with you know, some restraints. Sometimes there's not much I can do, but if I know I need to go and feed the cats, I'm just going to go do it. Like why put it off so that I could potentially forget. So anyway, 
Um, and, and this will get to how you're going to balance, I promise. But um, yeah, so my preference is this. My preference is this one on the right, because you've got things broken out, right? It's not so specific that it's like study this thing at this time, which, you know, I've done with students. We've, we've broken it out that way, you know, and that works in conjunction with this. But the beauty of having this is I know, all right, I want to ideally wake up around 7 to 7.30 every morning. And in the morning, in that first hour, I say study, but really all I'm doing is preparing myself for the day. So on Tuesday, right? All right. All right, Marcus, what did you do Monday night? All right. You've got this stuff. You know, you have these classes. Let's put that together. You said that you were going to get this thing done. All right. Let's write that down. Make sure you have your to-do list. Do I have everything in my backpack? Great. I'm going to go eat. I'm going to go to class. And so having your times that you'll eat, knowing when you're going to work, knowing when you'll study, it allows you to bend and shift when you do things. So for example, let's say John Smith is like, hey, Marcus, it's Wednesday. It's 10 cent wing night at the local chicken wing place. And I'm like, oh, great. And we actually used to have something like that. I'm from Buffalo, New York. We used to have something crazy like that. So it's like, all right, well, I had planned to study from 6.30 to 8.30, but you all want to go at seven. All right, it's going to take 30 minutes to get there. So ideally we should leave around 6.15. Well, what that means is I can either study beforehand when I normally would have gotten dinner, or I'll just move when I'm going to get things done right? So you've essentially built in time to procrastinate, to have a life outside of school. And one thing I also want you to notice is on each of these days, there's approximately three to four hours of studying. And this is the same student. And if you look back and you remember the maximum amount of time that he had to study in a day was three hours, the maximum. Most days it was like two. I mean, this one's a 45 minute day. So if on Monday, he only has to read for 45 minutes. Does he actually need to use all of this time to study? So this is what I prefer. This is what I do. Um, I can be very, I shouldn't say o OCD, but I can be very compulsive and just like, you know, cringe if something is like written wrong. If I have to scratch something out in the planner, I'm also really forgetful. So I lose them all the time. Um, but I prefer to use my digital calendars. So in my Microsoft Outlook, um, also just in my phone, I can add all of the events and things that I have to do. So when I worked as an academic advisor, um, this is from years ago, and I've cut out like different names. I just didn't want anybody to know anyone. Um, so this view for me is ridiculous, complicated, and just a lot to look at. So what's cool is on my phone or even on the computer, I can just look at one specific day. Right. And if you'll notice this day here, this is the phone. This is a screenshot of my phone. And here it's actually showing you that exact day. Right. So this event, my meeting with Carolyn, you see that here at 9 a.m. And so if I change that in my phone, it'll change on my computer. I can have it alert me if someone says, oh, actually, we're going to switch. We need to switch that date. I can just move it to another day. I don't have to rewrite it. I don't have to, you know, et cetera, et cetera. It basically plans things out for me. Um, and that's my preference. Um, it's, yeah, it helps me not lose it because if I lose my phone, that's pretty terrible. And not to say I haven't done it though. <laughs>